Today I practice the cadenza for the first movement of Beethoven's fourth piano concerto. A wonderful piece. And I, I need to show you what Beethoven has in mind when he starts this piece. Envision the conductor and the soloist walking on the stage. They nod to each other and the pianist is the first one to play and open the movement. A dreamlike theme and so the cadenza is fashioned on that theme as well as the second theme which the orchestra uh, starts first in its tutti Also, a third closing theme and motif. Very tiny motif, but very important later on in the piece. So, we have three ideas to build a cadenza, and that's exactly what Beethoven does. And he presents those themes and motives in various characters. So the pianist starts out playing his cadenza with the first theme. happens between this and the beginning of the cadenza. All of a sudden this idea of repeated notes and this little two note motive a transformation of the opening of this concerto. And so Beethoven improvises on this idea and uses it to modulate to different keys. Now he comes on the second page, he comes to the second theme. Uh, let me show you how he gets there. <laughs> So he presents it in a different key, B flat major. And he presents it also in a very, very high register of the piano. What I just played comes from the Busoni edition. Ferruccio Busoni edited this cadenza and adapted the original Beethoven cadenza to the modern piano, which had a larger register in the top. So it was therefore able, uh, he was therefore able to play the theme as it really was conceived by Beethoven. Keep in mind, it used to be in the strings. Beethoven's time, the very upper register of the piano did not exist as we have it today. And so Beethoven in its 
original cadenza wrote like this. which probably would have bothered him or did bother him because he would like to have extended this to this very high note which did not, not exist on his piano. So he had to make that compromise and change from There are other pieces in Beethoven's uh, over where you find that same situation occurring that he has maybe an idea, he presents the idea in the beginning of the piece and as the piece progresses and he wants to repeat this, the same melody in its original form, he comes to the very end of the piano and um, has to adapt to it. And um, let me show you how the first theme also will be transformed in the cadenza. this very relaxed type of playing in the cadenza you will hear you will have it even thinner even more pleading or more humble And what what does Beethoven up has up his sleeves? He starts before and probably most likely this character can be compared to certain areas in the Appassionata. This concerto after all comes from the period in Beethoven's life where he really exploited the so-called Sturm and Drang uh, period, the time when composers and other artists really became so much more independent artists and so, such strong personalities that they wanted to show the world who, who they are rather than becoming const constantly the servant of the, the patrons. So in the Sturm und Drang, there's a German expression for fire and impetus, probably loosely translated, uh, in that time period, the artist became an independent uh, personality. And so they showed the whole spectrum of what they could do without any restraint. And so this type of noise making, you know, is one of those examples where you have this rage and you have this triumphant playing and very virtuosic, brilliant fire happening in, in Beethoven which you never have heard before from uh, composers like Haydn or, or Mozart or Clementi or anyone like that. So Beethoven was the very first one who really explored the entirety of the piano and did not hold back at all for the sake of the patrons. He was the first composer who showed, I'm Beethoven and I'm an independent artist and what I play for you is what you have to like or do not like. And so this cadenza is one of those examples of music where he shows you the whole spectrum from the very humble beginnings, the very humble devote dreamer to 
something a little bit more outgoing. And later on in the cadenza we also have again the rage that he started. first time that he uses the third theme and he lets this cadenza end with a very sublime, very fantastic uh, transition in back into the orchestra. Let me show you. <laughs> join and he again repeats the, the closing theme as we heard it before and that will make a wonderful ending to this cadenza. Uh, he creates an atmosphere that is uh, very similar to the transition from the cadenza into the last tutti in the Violin Concerto by Beethoven, very similar in, in character. It's a very beautiful place in the whole movement and also very difficult to play for the pianist. 